In a world ravaged by human ignorance, climate change, pollution, and excessive natural habitat destruction, the wild world faced an imminent demise. Yet, as eloquently said by Dr. Ian Malcolm, Life uh, finds a way. In this video, we'll explore some of the animals that have reclaimed the Earth five million years after humans vanished in their evolutionary arms race. In today's video, we'll focus on the herbivores that seize the opportunity in this new world. We'll delve into their evolutionary history and explore how they've adapted to carve out their niche, ultimately becoming some of the most successful creatures of the future. In the distant past, the Galapagos Islands were home to a diverse array of iguanas, each adapted to the unique environments of their respective islands. As the climate changed and sea levels rose, one group of iguanas faced increasing pressure to find new food sources and habitats. These iguanas began to explore the coastal areas and shallow waters surrounding the islands, where they discovered abundant seagrass beds and other marine vegetation. Over time, these coastal iguanas evolved specialized traits to take advantage of this new ecological niche. Their bodies elongated, streamlined, and became more muscular, allowing them to swim more efficiently in the water. Their tails evolved into powerful paddles, while their limbs developed into sturdy, webbed appendages for steering and propulsion. To regulate their body temperature in the diverse environments of the islands and the surrounding ocean, they developed thermoregulatory adaptations such as color-changing skin and the ability to bask on rocks or dive into cooler waters as needed. Their diet shifted primarily to seagrasses and marine algae, which provided them with the nutrients needed to sustain their new aquatic lifestyle. Their digestive systems adapted to efficiently process these marine plants, enabling them to thrive in their coastal habitats. As they became more aquatic, these iguanas lost their ability to climb and their sharp claws, but their powerful jaws and teeth remained, allowing them to graze on tough underwater vegetation. Over millions of years, these coastal iguanas evolved into the Galapagensis draconis, or the Galapagos seafaring dragons, becoming one of the most iconic and unique species of the Galapagos Islands. These majestic creatures can be found basking on rocky shores, gliding gracefully through the shallow waters, and foraging for seagrasses in the rich coastal ecosystems of the archipelago. Galapagensis draconis are imposing creatures, with adult individuals typically reaching lengths of 3 to 4 meters, 10 to 13 feet from snout to tail tip, and weighing up to 500 kilograms, 1,100 pounds. Their robust bodies are well suited for their aquatic lifestyle, with males generally being larger and more muscular than females. Despite their imposing size, they are surprisingly agile swimmers, capable of navigating through the ocean with grace and speed. Galapagensis draconis exhibit a complex social structure, with individuals forming small family groups centered around prime coastal habitats. Within these groups, there is a hierarchy established through displays of dominance and submission, with the largest and most formidable individuals typically holding the highest rank. They are primarily herbivorous, feeding on a diet consisting mainly of seagrasses, algae, and other marine vegetation. They use their powerful jaws to tear and chew through tough underwater plants, often feeding in groups to maximize efficiency. During low tide, they may also venture onto land to graze on coastal vegetation. Aerophiltratus volucer's ancestors were swifts, or swallows, highly agile flying birds known for their ability to catch insects in flight. These birds inhabited diverse habitats and were adept at maneuvering through the air to capture prey. As their habitats changed over time, including alterations in vegetation patterns, climate shifts, or the emergence of new competitors, some swifts or swallows began to explore alternative food sources to supplement their insect-based diet. In response to scarcity of their usual prey or increased competition, certain individuals within the swift or swallow populations began to experiment with filter feeding on airborne particles such as pollen, spores, and microscopic organisms. Individuals with longer wingspans and more efficient wing shapes were favored, allowing them to cover greater distances while expending less energy during their airborne foraging. Birds with slightly modified beaks or mouthparts better suited for capturing and filtering airborne particles 
had a selective advantage, leading to the gradual evolution of these specialized traits. As filter feeding became more prevalent within the population, birds started to spend more time in areas with abundant airborne particles, such as near flowering plants, trees, or bodies of water. They developed specific aerial foraging behaviors, such as skimming the air and hovering, to capture particles. Over time, genetic differentiation occurred between individuals specialized in filter feeding and those still reliant on insects. Distinct subpopulations of filter feeding swifts or swallows emerged with traits that better suited their new dietary habits. The filter feeding swifts or swallows continued to diversify into different ecological niches, with some evolving to feed on specific types of airborne particles and others adapting to different habitats or feeding strategies. This diversification ultimately led to the emergence of a new species, Aerofiltratus veluser, specialized in airborne filter feeding. As Aerofiltratus veluser evolved, they further refined their adaptations for aerial filter feeding. Modifications to their wing structure enhanced their gliding and soaring abilities, while improvements to their filtering mechanisms allowed them to efficiently capture and extract nutrients from airborne particles. Today, Aerofiltratus veluser is a highly specialized and successful group of flying filter feeders, playing a vital role in their ecosystems as they glide effortlessly through the air, harvesting nutrients from the atmosphere. Aerofiltratus veluser is a medium-sized bird with adult individuals typically measuring around 30 to 40 centimeters, 12 to 16 inches in length from beak to tail. They have a wingspan of approximately 60 to 80 centimeters, 24 to 32 inches, allowing them to glide efficiently through the air while filter feeding. Their bodies are streamlined and aerodynamic with elongated wings that taper towards the tips. These wings are designed for prolonged soaring and gliding, enabling them to cover vast distances while expending minimal energy. Their bodies are lightweight yet sturdy, with hollow bones similar to those of their swift and swallow ancestors. Aerofiltratus veluser has sleek, glossy feathers that help reduce air resistance during flight. Their plumage varies in color, often blending with the sky to provide camouflage against predators while airborne. Megalocervus arctus descends from the reindeer, known for their adaptability to arctic and subarctic environments. Over the next 5 million years, certain populations of reindeer began to evolve in response to changing climate conditions and new environmental pressures. As global temperatures rose and permafrost began to melt, the traditional tundra habitats of reindeer transformed. New plant species emerged, creating more diverse and lush grazing grounds. The reindeer that adapted to these changes by exploiting new food sources began to thrive and evolve. Over time, Megalocervus arctus evolved to become significantly larger than its ancestors. These giants stand at over 3 meters, 10 feet at the shoulder, and can weigh up to 2,000 kilograms, 4,400 pounds. Their robust, muscular bodies allow them to store fat and energy efficiently, ensuring survival through harsh winters. To cope with the extreme cold, they developed a thick, shaggy coat that changes color seasonally dark brown in winter to, to absorb heat and lighter, almost silvery in summer to reflect sunlight. The fur is dense and long, providing excellent insulation against frigid temperatures. One of the most striking features of Megalocervus arctus is its enormous spiraling antlers, which can span up to 2 meters 6.5 feet in length. These antlers serve multiple purposes, attracting mates, deterring predators, and competing with rivals. The antler's unique shape helps to distribute the force of impacts during fights. Their faces are elongated with powerful jaws adapted to graze on a variety of tundra vegetation, including tough grasses and shrubs. They have keen eyesight and highly sensitive hearing, allowing them to detect predators from afar. Megalocervus arctus lives in small family groups similar to elephants. These groups consist of females and their young, led by a matriarch. Females stay together to provide mutual protection and care for the young. Males, on the other hand, live largely solitary lives, coming together with females only during the mating season. They are primarily grazers, but have adapted to browse when necessary. Their strong, dexterous tongues can strip leaves and bark from shrubs and small trees. 
They also dig through snow with their powerful hooves to access buried vegetation. Mating season occurs in the late summer, with males using their impressive antlers in displays and battles to win over females. Calves are born in the spring, timed with the emergence of fresh vegetation to ensure ample food supply for the growing young. As primary herbivores, Megalocervus arctis plays a crucial role in the tundra ecosystem. Their grazing patterns help shape the vegetation structure, promoting plant diversity and influencing the distribution of other herbivores. Due to their size, adults are largely immune from predation. However, their young, sick, and old serve as vital prey for top Arctic carnivores. Sura vulpes velox, swift squirrel fox, descends from the eastern gray squirrel, which is well known for its arboreal lifestyle. As climate change led to widespread desertification and the reduction of forests, these squirrels were forced to adapt to a life on the ground in increasingly open plains. With rising global temperatures, many forested areas transitioned into vast plains with sparse tree cover. The reduction in trees made it difficult for eastern gray squirrels to find shelter and food, pushing them to adapt to life on the ground. Over millions of years, these squirrels evolved significant changes to thrive in the plains. Sierra Volpes velox evolved to be much larger and more robust than their squirrel ancestors. They stand about 1.2 meters, 4 feet tall at the shoulder and can weigh up to 50 kilograms, 110 pounds. Sierra Volpes Velox have evolved to be exceptionally fast runners, capable of reaching speeds of up to 88 kilometers per hour, 55 miles per hour. This speed is crucial for escaping predators and navigating their open habitat. Their large, bushy tail is multifunctional. It helps with balance during fast movements, serves as a signaling tool among their species, and acts as a deterrent to confuse predators. Their fur is a mix of gray and tawny hues, offering effective camouflage in the grassy plains. The dense fur provides insulation, keeping them cool during hot days and warm during cooler nights. Their large, tufted ears enhance their hearing, allowing them to detect distant predators. The ear tufts also help with thermoregulation. Their keen eyesight, adapted for both daylight and low-light conditions, aids in their crepuscular activity. Sierra Vulpes velox live in large herds similar to deer, with a social structure that includes multiple family groups. Herds typically consist of several dozen individuals, providing safety in numbers. During the mating season, males display elaborate courtship behaviors to attract females. They primarily consume grasses, herbs, and shrubs found in the plains. To supplement their diet, they occasionally eat insects and small animals when plant resources are scarce. The mating season occurs during cooler months to ensure that offspring are born when food is more plentiful. Females give birth to litters of two to four young, which are cared for communally within the herd. Young Sierra Volpes velox are precocial, able to stand and run shortly after birth. As primary herbivores, Sierra Volpes velox play a vital role in maintaining the balance of the plains ecosystem. Their grazing helps control plant growth and contributes to the ecological equilibrium. They are also prey for larger predators, thus integral to the food web. Sierra Volpes velox inhabit vast plains and grasslands that have replaced many of the former forested areas. They are found across a wide range of regions that were once temperate forests, adapting well to various climates within the plains ecosystem. Elephas herbomontis can trace their ancestry back to Asian elephants. During the time of humans, human encroachment into their natural habitat Rising temperatures and changes in precipitation patterns forced a small population of Asian elephants to seek new habitats. Some populations migrated towards higher elevations where cooler temperatures and lush vegetation offer a refuge. Over millions of years, these elephants underwent significant adaptations to thrive in their new mountainous environments. Elephas herbomontis evolved to be smaller and more robust than their lowland ancestors. They stand about 2.1 meters, 7 feet tall at the shoulder and weigh around 2,800 kilograms, 6,200 pounds. The reduction in size helps them navigate steep and rocky terrains more effectively. They developed a thicker, woolly coat to insulate against cooler mountain temperatures. Their skin retains some of the wrinkled texture of their ancestors, but is more heavily covered with coarse, protective hair. Their legs became shorter and more muscular, 
providing better support and balance on uneven ground. The feet adapted with broader, more padded soles for stability and traction on rocky surfaces. The tusks of Eliphas herbomontis are shorter and more curved, aiding in digging through snow and ice to access vegetation during winter months. These tusks also help in foraging for roots and tubers buried in the ground. Eliphas herbomontis live in small, cohesive family groups led by a matriarch. These groups consist of related females and their young. Males typically leave the herd upon reaching maturity, but often remain within the same mountain range, forming loose bachelor groups. They are highly adaptable foragers, consuming a diverse diet of grasses, shrubs, leaves, bark, and roots. During winter, they dig through snow to access buried vegetation and strip bark from trees for sustenance. Seasonal migration patterns develop, with herds moving to lower elevations during harsh winter months to access more abundant food sources. They return to higher elevations in the spring and summer, following the growth of alpine vegetation. Eliphas herbomontis play a crucial role in maintaining the health of mountain ecosystems. Their grazing and browsing activities help control plant growth, promote biodiversity, and create open spaces that benefit other species. As they forage, they disperse seeds through their dung, facilitating plant regeneration and contributing to the ecological balance of their habitat. Their presence supports a range of predators, including large carnivores that rely on young or weak individuals for sustenance, thus maintaining the predator-prey dynamics within their ecosystem. Eliphas herbomontis are primarily found in the mountain ranges of Southeast Asia, including the Himalayas and other high-altitude regions. They inhabit a range of elevations from subalpine zones to lower montane forests. Their thick fur and adaptable foraging strategies allow them to thrive in varying climates within their mountainous range, from temperate forests to snowy alpine environments. Which of these creatures would you like to see 5 million years in the future? Let us know in the comment section below. That's all for this video. If you've learned something new, hit the like button and share with your friends. You could also subscribe for more answers to your thoughts of nature. Please leave a comment for what you would like to learn about next. Thank you.